What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me where today we're going to go ahead and create this really cool 3D glass style pin. And you're going to need a photograph of your choice or you can use the photograph that I put in the description down below. You could use a photograph of somewhere that means a lot to you or a special occasion. Anything you want you can pop it in the pin design. You could even possibly add some text at the bottom if you want to add in potentially the event type. For example you could add in a special place name where we got engaged, date etc anything you like it's totally up to you but we're going to create the pin design there's a link in the description down below to the image used and the canvas size and that's everything you're going to need for today's design and before we get started if you didn't already know i post three more exclusive tutorials over on my patreon every single month if you'd like to get three more exclusive tutorials have your name featured in videos sneak peeks and much much more hit the link in the description down below and come and show your support and with all that said let's get started Okay, so once you've got your canvas, the first thing you're going to want to go ahead and do is create the pin that we're going to use for our little photograph. So we're going to go up to our layers and in the empty layer, we're going to go to our colors and it doesn't really matter what the color is. We're just going to double tap on the left hand side here to select the middle gray. We're then going to go to our brush library. We're going to go to calligraphy and we're going to use the monoline brush. Now the brush size doesn't really matter too much. All we're going to want to do is go ahead and draw a circle and hold your pen at the end and then pop your finger on the screen and this will make sure it's a nice perfect circle. Something like this will do. Then grab your cursor, tap on your cursor and make sure snapping is turned on in the bottom left hand side. Then we can go ahead and move that onto that center column there, which just lets us know we're nicely aligned in the middle of our canvas when you hit the orange line. Tap on your cursor when you're done. We're then gonna go ahead and go to our layers, swipe that layer to the left and duplicate it. Grab your cursor. Use the uniform option in the middle here and just scale this down until we create the little hole that's going to sit in the middle of our pin. So something around about that sort of size looks good. And again, making sure you're in the center and you'll hit the orange line through the middle, but also the blue line horizontally, which lets you know you're nice and centered in the middle of that actual circle, the larger one on the outside. And then we're going to go up to our layers and we're going to swipe this layer to the left and duplicate it. And then grab our cursor and move this one down towards the bottom so we can make sure we've got some nice consistency with our circle shapes. So we're going to move it down to roughly here and you'll see these three lines which let you know you're nice and centered in the middle of our canvas. And then we're going to tap on our cursor when we're done. Now the next step is to go to our layers. We're going to pinch all three circles together so they then end up on one layer. And then we're just going to go to our actions, canvas, edit, drawing guide, and then edit the actual drawing guide. We're going to go to symmetry and we're going to change the option to make sure it's vertical and you'll see a line run down the middle of your screen. Hit done in the top right when you're done and then using the monoline brush we're going to go ahead and link this side into this circle here. Now what I recommend is if you make your brush size really small down to 1% and you try to guesstimate sort of roughly here is where the circle starts to come around on itself draw a line and let that just run perfectly down into this center circle at the bottom. So this line here nicely just continues its motion all the way down and round. And because we added the drawing guide, it's added it on both sides for us. Now we can go ahead and drag the gray into the top of the circle, into the body and into the circle at the bottom. And then you can go up to your actions and turn off the drawing guide. So that is the main pin that we're gonna use. But we need to of course make it a little bit 3d as well so the first thing we're then going to do is go up to our cursor we're going to use the distort option here and we're going to go ahead and grab this node here in the top left and just bring that down a little bit which is then going to give you a little bit of an angle for your pin so it's kind of facing up to the top left hand side there then go to your layers and swipe the layer to the left and duplicate it now Let's go up to our colors and just grab a slightly darker gray. So just bring that down. It doesn't matter what the gray specifically is. It's just so we can differentiate the front from the side. So once you've got a color, then go to your layers. The bottom layer out of the two pins, just drag and drop that color into this space here. Now you won't see any visual change, but if we then go to our cursor and use the uniform option here again, grab this node here in the top left hand side and bring that down. We're going to scale it down and this is gonna help us with our little 3D effect. And so we wanna move that node from there and we also wanna move perfectly across to the right hand side, making sure that these two bottom areas here are somewhat 
parallel to each other. And then tap on your cursor when you're done. Now we just need to make a minor adjustment just to make sure these line up correctly. And that is linking up the very bottom of our little pin set here. Now we do need to go to the layer and tap on the layer and turn off the drawing assist. So tap on it and turn off the drawing assist. And you can do that on the layer above as well. So tap on the layer above and turn off the drawing assist too. Return back to the darker one out of the two that we made. And all we need to do is just simply draw a line across the bottom to link them up and then fill in the gap. And then we're gonna go ahead and go up here just to this right hand side. And then from up here, just draw a line and link them up, filling in the tiny little gap. Next, we're gonna go ahead and add in the photograph for our pin. So you can use any photograph you like. It could be a location that's special to you, but I'm gonna go ahead and use the one that's linked in the description down below. So I'm gonna grab Chrome and put it up here. You would otherwise need to grab your photos and put it over here on the left-hand side and drag and drop the photo in that you need. So this is our little test image that we're gonna use and we're gonna hold down on the image and then drag it onto the screen. You can then get rid of Chrome, so you can swipe up and delete it. And then we can go ahead and move this into position where we need it. So we're gonna use the uniform option here. And grab the node in the top right, scale this up, making it a little bit bigger, like so. We're gonna prioritize the boat and just slightly off to the right. So something a little bit like this looks pretty good. We're then gonna go ahead and tap on our cursor when we're done. Now we need to do a couple of different things. We need to first of all, move that image all the way to the bottom. We then also need to swipe the image to the left and duplicate it and drag it up to the top. Now if we tap on this top image here and tap on it and clipping mask it to the pin, you'll see the shadow pop in, but it's currently just clipped to the top of the pin area. The bottom one out of all the layers, the bottom background image, we're gonna go ahead and go to our adjustments, Gaussian blur, and we're gonna swipe from left to right and we're gonna blur this out until we get to a nice fuzz, but we don't want to go ahead and remove too much structure. I like the fact that you can still see that that's an edge of a building and it's this building here. Likewise, we can see the boat here as well. So you may want to just blur it out to something around about 18% there. If not, you could go slightly higher and maybe go to a maximum of about 22. Then tap on your adjustments when you're done and you've got your pin nicely filled in with the image. Now we are going to go to our layers and we're gonna go ahead and go right to the top and we're gonna go ahead and create a new layer. We're gonna tap on this layer and we're gonna go ahead and clipping mask it. Then we're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna double tap here on the left of our disc, which is gonna select this middle gray. We're gonna go ahead and drag and drop that onto the screen. Then we're gonna to go to our adjustments. We're then gonna to go to noise and we're gonna go ahead and use the clouds effect and we're gonna go ahead and drag from left to right on the screen until we get all the way up. You can go all the way up to 300%. And then you can mess around with these sort of scales here. Now this is gonna give your photo a little bit more of a painting look. So if you go up to sort of these values here, 14% scale, 44% and 70%. We can then go back to the layer. We can tap on the layer option and we can scroll down until we go to overlay. And then if you take a look at your photograph now, it's kind of got like a very sort of very stipple look to it, which looks really cool if you want to give it that painting look. That is optional, you don't have to do that, but that's just something we can do in this particular part of the design. I'm going to turn mine off, but I'm going to create a new layer. Tap on that layer and clipping mask it. I'm going to go ahead and change the layer effect from normal, and we're going to scroll until we get to the option of hard mix. We're going to go to our colors, and we're going to double tap at the bottom of the disk to select black. We're then going to go ahead and go to our brush library. We're going to go to the option of airbrushing and soft brush. And we're going to make that brush size roughly around about sort of 5% is always my go to five or 6%. And we're going to start adding in some shadows. So we're going to come around from the top and just really darken up this side here, go all the way down to you go all the way around that right hand side. We're then also going to go ahead and go around the inside here of the pin. So just a little bit like so. And we're gonna go ahead and go round the far left hand side just a little bit before we add in some extra highlights on top, which will make that side pop again. So there we go, we've got some shadows on top of there. Let's go to our layers and create a new layer. Let's change the layer effect from normal. We're gonna scroll down to add. 
and we're going to go to our colors and we're going to double tap in the top left hand side we're then going to go ahead and make our brush size a little bit smaller maybe around about sort of that three to four percent mark and we're going to start adding in some highlights so we want to add a highlight that just runs right around the edge here so we just need to go back to the layer tap on it and clipping mask it and we're going to come around the very far right edge just following the line all the way down to the center that's going to add in a nice little bit of curvature on this side we're then going to go ahead and on the inside so i'm going to press really firm for a second just to show you the area that we want to try and fill in it's roughly that so we're going to go ahead and very lightly i'm going to make the brush a bit bigger about four percent just very lightly to start with just do exactly that so this nice straight line down here all the way down to the center and i'm going to go back over myself running that up to the top so you can start to see that glow coming in from the side what we're then also going to do is add a glow here on the inside of this pin center so we're going to press very lightly just to start with just down in this bottom right hand side almost so the light's coming across and just kissing the inside edge there and then we're going to go back to this highlight around the outside and make our brush a bit smaller on about sort of one to two percent we're going to start off by drawing a straight line up this edge till we get to the part where it starts to curve on itself and then we're going to go ahead and do exactly that we're going to create a curve hold your pen down and you may want to do that a couple of times until you end up with a bit of a sort of very sort of bold line that's just going to sit on that edge that's just going to add in some nice little bit of lighting on there and you can if you want to then start to add in maybe little dots of light where we've got some extra little bits of lighting happening off on the left hand side somehow and then just finally we want to go ahead and make our brush size about sort of three to two percent and where we've got the shadow just like we did over this edge we're going to go around the very left hand side edge see there's barely any of this white coming around but just enough that we can just bring in a little bit of a glow on that left hand side and there we go we've got a nice really cool 3d effect on our little pin there Let's then go ahead and add in some additional highlights just to bump up the lightness of the image. So we're going to go to our layers and create one more new layer. Tap on that layer and clipping mask it also. And change the layer effect from normal to overlay. We're going to continue with white. And we're just going to simply make our brush size a little bit bigger, around about sort of 5 to 6%. And just brighten up this top left hand side again. So just going around and around and around a few times just to brighten up that edge a little bit more creating a much more sort of contrasty image and maybe even the slightest bit down here too just to give a little bit more of a glassy look to it and that's it that's the front of the pin done we can move on to the sides so what we need to do is we need to go to our layers if we take a look we've got this image here that's clipped to this pin here so we're going to swipe this layer to the left and duplicate it so we've got two of the photograph now grab either one of them and drag it down until you put it above this darker gray which is the side profile of our pin. Tap on the image and clip it to that pin and then you'll have the image trickle over onto the side as well. Now we're just going to add in some little bit of shadow and highlights on this side just to make it look a bit more realistic. So we're going to go to the layers and create a new layer. Tap on that layer and clipping mask it and we're going to change our color. We're going to go ahead and double tap at the bottom of the disk to select black. With our soft brush still about sort of four or five percent the first thing we want to do is really sort of darken up in here so we're going to draw in some lines and then maybe leave some brighter edges towards the right hand side and the left hand side but just to show that there is a shadow in there but there is a little bit of that image what we're then also going to do is darken up around here as well so we're going to come around the right hand side more so coming down here really darkening that up and most definitely under the bottom of the pin too. We are going to give the whole side though a very light coat. So maybe just reduce your opacity down to say 45% and just give it a good coat over the side. This will start to darken up a little bit more compared to the front of the pin. You want to make it look like this is the shadowed side, but we still got a little bit of that image coming through. And then we're going to go to our layers and create another layer and change the layer effect from normal. We're going to go ahead and scroll down until we get to soft light we're going to make sure we tap on this layer and also clipping mask it and then go to your colors and double tap in the top left hand side to select white 
And then what we're gonna do is where we've got this nice little bit of light that rolls round, we're gonna emphasize that a little bit. So we're gonna increase our opacity up to 100% again. Make our brush size around about sort of 3%. And we're gonna follow round this edge. So just follow up and around. So we can go over it a few times if you wish, but that's just gonna help that lightness a little bit more. And we're gonna go around the right hand side as well. So just come around the far right edge, just right close to the edge. And that just slowly start to bring in a little bit more of the lighting. It's not gonna be very strong, but it's just enough there. And then the other thing you can do is just on the inside here of the circle, on that right hand side and left hand side that we left a little bit lighter, we're gonna overlap that a little bit more with this little bit of the white area on the inside. And just around this bottom edge as well, where you can see just the bottom of the circle, just add in a little bit on there as well. There we go, that's your pin all done. We can now go ahead and add in a shadow underneath as well. So let's go to our layers and create one new layer. Drag it all the way to the bottom in front of your blurry background image. Then go to your colors and double tap at the bottom of the disc to select black. Go to your selection tool and the ellipse option and color fill needs to be turned on. So it will look like this, it will be blue. And you want to go ahead and draw in an ellipse that sort of drags off to the right hand side a little bit more like so. Tap on your selection tool when you're done. Then we're going to go ahead and add some blurring to this. So we're going to go to our adjustments and motion blur. So from left to right, so perfectly left to right. Don't go too far to the edge there. You don't want to get too off the canvas. So I've gone up to 36% there just to blur out the edges. And then go back to your adjustments again. Gaussian blur. And swipe from left to right. This will diffuse that shadow a little bit more. So now we're at 6% just to blur that out just a tiny bit. Tap on your adjustments when you're done. And then what you're going to want to do is grab your cursor. Use the freeform option. Grab the far right node and just bring it a little bit closer to the edge of the circle and then grab the distort option and grab the node in the top right just to sort of push that shadow backwards a little bit and then grab this one at the bottom here so we're kind of trying to spread that out upwards and downwards a little bit more from the base of that circle so you can see if i move that inwards so it's not off the canvas you want to create this kind of shape here and that will give you a shadow right underneath your pin and then as the sort of height of the pin there in its shadow just starts to sort of blur out a little bit towards the back and then tap on your cursor when you're done and then if you want to it's totally optional I'll leave it to you but you could add some nice text at the bottom where it could be a little message to say where we got engaged and the date and maybe even the location it could be a little Christmas message it could be anything you want the options are endless and I'll leave that up to you so if we pinch with two fingers and we get full screen with four we end up with today's finished design so I hope you enjoyed this sort of photo manipulation kind of design. As always, be sure to share your designs with me over on Instagram. I look forward to seeing what you get up to. And if you didn't already know, I post weekly tutorials here on my YouTube channel, but I also post three more exclusive tutorials every single month, but to my Patreon supporters over on Patreon. There's a link in the description down below if you want to become a supporter, as well as a link to all the tutorials that you unlock when you become a patron. You can have your name featured in videos, early access, sneak peeks, and much, much more. Again, that link will be in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.